we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, by the mystery of God, help us to realize Christ. By the mystery of Christ, help us to do four-step repentance, and our darkened hearts, may they become enlightened. May we realize all of the world, and may we receive solutions for all problems. At this time, we believe this, that this will be that blessed time, and may we live within the blessings of doing more well, and to pass these blessings down to our descendants for, for 10,000 generations, and to live as patriots for our country and our people. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. So, as you fervently pray, and if you keep loving God as much as you love, you receive. That's Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. So you should receive, but the reason why it doesn't work very well, every time you sin, who is tormented? So you know, every time I sin, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 24, it's God who is tormented. So God, he's in control of life and death. He, does, he gives money, takes it, he does everything. So if you torment him, what's good about that? If you're double-minded, God knows that all. So from the past, particularly in Asia, you know, China, Japan, Korea, they talk so much about a filial child. How much do they talk about a filial child that in the Chinese characters that they, there's a character for for being a filial child? And in Korea, they gave awards for being a filial child, but but there's no way to become a filial child. So the one giving the prize, the one receiving the prize, it's all a lie. There's no way to become a filial child. Which religion has a way to become a filial child? So you say that you're repenting a lot. So of course the sins of the heart, the sins of hating to keep God in your heart, the sins of your flesh, even doing this, that's incredible. But more than these, how we haven't been obedient to our parents. Who is it that's confident in saying that they were obedient to their parents? According to the Bible, it's all a lie. So if you can't become obedient, then what happens? So in the past, 10 years of study was, uh, you know, it was so amazing. But these days, if you graduate from elementary school, including preschool, you know, tutoring, then that's 10 years worth. But it's you can't use it for anything. I don't know about Korea, but in America, a child in the graduating class of kindergarten already they're doing experiments with water in their diary, I saw. You know, I'm not that used to English, but when I read, it said, you know, I did an experiment to separate H2O. This is a this is a kindergarten student. That That's not someone else, but my own grandchild. So in the past, what you learned in middle school, you're learning in elementary school. You know, what you learn in high school, you learn in elementary school, and yet it, you can't use it for anything. You know, with that, it's, with that, you're not going to get employed. So they talk a lot about being a filial child, but there's no way to become an obedient child. So this is what we have to solve. So the sins where I wasn't an obedient child, to be forgiven of that, that's when my children become obedient. So even though people are so, they have so much learning, you know, you go along the street, who is there that's like a man? I haven't seen myself directly, but when I hear these elderly people, these young kids come and say, hey, give me a cigarette. You know, if 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 they say they don't have one, then, you know, they, they say something back. So it's unbelievable. This is what's coming from these elderly people's mouths. So it's not to criticize and throw the stone and curse those people. How did I act to my parents. If there is sin, does God help you or not? Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 to 2. If you have sin remaining, whether it's the sins of the past or whatever sin, 
he's not going to help you. So you have to receive God's help. But it's because of sin that you're not receiving his help. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13, if you scorn God's word, you'll be ruined. So he says that I hope you are dawn, but you scorn this and you wander around, you expect to receive blessings, you expect your business to do well, you expect your children to do well, that you expect to have blessings in your late age. How can you have such thoughts? As long as you have your thoughts, then you haven't been baptized. If you're not baptized, then you have demons. You know, if you have demons, what do you think that you can do? So your thoughts mean that you, you're not baptized. Colossians chapter 2 verse 20. Even though you're given the word, this much you still don't understand. So then, did my parents do full step repentance so well that I became an obedient child? What kind of lie is that? My parents didn't even know full step repentance properly. And even though we say that we're doing four step repentance, so if your if the parents don't do four step repentance, that's the sin of rebellion. That means all the children are disobedient. So why, you know, get married to a family like that and then say later, oh, you know, I'm not doing well. If you have rebellion already, the children are disobedient. You can't do well. Let's find Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18. So the problem isn't my children. You know, you have to repent of how you were a child under your parents. But you're so shameless. You're repenting of other things, but you let these sins remain. No matter how much you pray, that's why you're not doing well. You say that your children's exams have ended. Life, until God calls you, you continue to receive tests. You say that, you know, the exams are over. No. Someone who's unfortunate, even though they may have the highest score, they still can't get into school. You know, because, of, because they don't have one mark, they don't get in. And yet, if God guides you, even though you don't have the score, you get in. So... These schools marks, what's so what's right about that? Just because you've received good grades now, what's what's so right about that? Everything that you do with your head, it's all evil. So those who study well with their head, even in the world they say those who are smart, you know, they're so um flippant and careless and thoughtless. You see if every anything that they do, they do it properly. Those who are smart in their work or their business, you know, they're so changeable. They do this and they're ruined. They do that and they're ruined. They change things and they they waste all their money. So with their retirement money, you know, just by spending it on the interior decorating, you lose all that money. So if you go to the sea, you see these stones that roll. You see if the algae grows on them. But then these stones that stay still, they're the ones that grow seaweed or algae on them. So what does that mean? When you repent, you should be like a rolling stone. You continue to repent so that sin doesn't stick to you. But when you receive blessings, you need to stand still and have the patience and receive those blessings. So repentance is Christ. Patience is Christ. So without doing false step repentance, you cannot receive blessings. If you do false step repentance, you become like a rolling stone and get rid of your sins. And if you do false step repentance, you're like the rock because Christ is the rock and you receive blessings. So you have to realize correctly. So Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18. If any man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father or his mother, and when they chastise him, he will not even listen to them. Amen. So here it says to a man, if you have a stubborn and rebellious son. So it doesn't say parents. Whatever household, if you want to see how they'll do, you look at the children. Whatever country, if you look at the young people of that country, you'll know that country's future. So what, what am I like? What's my household like? What's my country like? They say there's a lot of nasty people in America. And yes, there are a lot of nasty things. I came out from lunch. And there were all these bullets flying around. Everyone was crouching down. I crouched down too. So I was crouched down next to a car. So after lunch, after a revival, we finished our meal and came out and these bullets were flying. And, and then soon someone had died and they were carried off. On the other hand, if you get into an elevator, 
You know, if they see someone who's a little bit older, you know, they keep their, their, the politeness way more than in Korea. On the outside, they say that America is so corrupt. To a dog, they only see poo. A man is someone who sees good things. If you've seen something bad, to repent it of as my sin and to change it to good, that's a man. This only, this is only in the Bible, because in the world, what's good is good and what's bad is bad. But Philippians chapter two verse four, the bad things we repent of it as mine, change it to good, and good things we change to good. So to do more and more well, that is the way of a man. So here it says. My problems, my family's problems, my country's problems, mankind's problems. It's saying a man has a son. What kind of son? Well, stubbornness. That's your own sin, the sins of your heart, the sins of hating to keep God in your heart, the sins of your flesh. So you're stubborn. And then there's a re and rebellion. This rebellion is what your ancestors, what you, how you've betrayed Christ, you've betrayed the gospel. So you and I, we do God's word. What's a fake? They pretend to do God's word, but they do it so that it doesn't work. So this word, what is it? What what makes it work? It's by the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ's four step repentance. And that's why God says, without four step repentance, Colossians chapter two, verse eight. That gospel without four step repentance is a is a gospel that will spoil your soul. So what is mission work? It's to only speak the mystery of Christ, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. So the fake church doesn't do what God says to. That's why they're fake, Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. So what is the sin of rebellion? Where does it come from? If you have this sin of rebellion, do the children listen to the parents or not? So not just in our society, but all of world society, these young kids, these children, they don't listen to their parents. This is a problem. So everyone is saying this. But then just below, it's scary. It says to take them to the elders and stone them to death, even though they're your children. Because of the, it's the parents who committed the sin of rebellion. But if the children don't listen, it says to stone them because they're not even a person. But what's our society like? Before you look at others, what about me? What was I like to my parents? If the parents didn't do forced state repentance, you say that you didn't receive the sin of rebellion? So if, this, if rebellions come, what am I like? Well, I was so disobedient to my parents. I was never obedient to them. So when have you ever repented of this? Not only don't we repent of this, so not only have we not repented of this, so you look at those people, these beasts who learn with their IQ, these dog pigs who learn this evil. You know, their children become crazy and they come here. Are they healed? They come here and they just want to use God. So they come for a moment and then they depart. Those evil people are the ones that are learned in our, in our world. So what you learn with your head, it is the worst of evil. James chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. It's de demonic. It's so evil. That's what God has pointed out. So it's their own children that have become crazy, that have become disabled, they have problems. So they should be stoned to death. That's how disobedient they are. But these, it's the learned people who betray and won't believe even more. So these young, so these children who won't listen to their father or their mother. Why is it your children don't listen? Because I have passed down this sin of rebellion, which is to betray Christ. That's why your children don't listen. It's not what other people have done. Let's read it again. If any man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father or his mother, and when they chastise him, he will not even listen to them. Amen. So if you want to keep reading, it's scary because it says to take them and stone them to death. It's not your children who are wicked. It's because I've betrayed God and committed the sin of rebellion. Let's find Ezekiel chapter. So it's the parents who aren't doing four-step repentance. So the children become so rebellious. They're the worst of evil. And then you think, oh, just by having only a few children will be okay. Whether you don't have children, that sin remains. And even if you just have one child, that sin remains. 
Just because you, you know, instead of having 10, you only have one child, you think they're going to become a person? No, it's because the sin of rebellion that they don't do well. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3, and 4, 3, 4 and 5. Let's see what this sin of rebellion is. Ezekiel. Then he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the sons of Israel, to a rebellious people who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. I am sending you to them who are stubborn and obstinate children, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they listen or not, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. Amen. So mission work, evangelism, it says to only speak the mystery of Christ, Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. So evangelism and the mission work, it's to speak the mystery of Christ. But there are people who won't listen to the mystery of Christ. That's because from their ancestors, they've had this sin of rebellion. So verse 5, it says they are a rebellious house. So if the ancestors, they hindered the gospel, they're demons who are filthy. No matter how much you tell them, they're not going to listen. So those people who don't listen to the mystery of Christ, you think that it's good, but they're a filthy house from their ancestors. They should be stoned to death. It's these people that won't listen. Because they're rebellious, they won't listen. That's what God has recorded. This is the word of truth. So you talk about how, oh, my children don't listen to forced out repentance. From your ancestors, that's a filthy household that should be stoned to death. So how can you walk around shamelessly saying that you're a man? So, you know, people, they hide their faces when they steal it, you know, some money. But you see these people come out on TV who are shameless. So here it says they're shameless and their hearts are hardened. Why? Because of sin. It says, I'm sending you to them. So to these people in the world, you, you should be sent. So that's how I was shameless to my parents. Why? Because of my ancestors' sin of rebellion. How many people here were, did their ancestors do forced at repentance? So without me realizing, they have, have made me covered by this rebellion. So you look back and see if you're obedient to your parents. How much were you dutiful to your parents? You know, you think God's going to let that alone? That sin of rebellion... Because your ancestors didn't live a life of faith properly, they either believed in demons or they went to a church without Christ. The European church without Christ, since Jesus came for 2,000 years, now they're completely empty. If you go on tour, you'll see these empty churches. You know, these people smoking, these people drinking, these, pe these people who steal, they go in, and after viewing, they just curse God. So our country already, it's starting, they're starting to decrease. Why? Because of this sin of rebellion, this sin of betrayal. So there are a lot of people here who try to be dutiful. You know, even after they pass away, you try. You're, you, you say, well, you know what, I'm going to try and live as a good child. But it doesn't work. You know, it's now that they've passed away, it seems like it's working a bit, but actually it's not. How can you how can you tell? Because you look at your children the way they act to you and you look at your neighbours. Why? It's because of the sin of betrayal, rebellion. So as long as you have this sin remaining, no matter how much you pray, it's not going to work. So I'm gonna read verse three. Then he said to me, Son of man. I'm sending you to the sons of Israel. So it's not Israel over there. It's talking about this rebellious people. Who is the rebellious people? Those who have rebelled against me. So it says, I will send you to them. So you and I, we have to do this precious work where we go and speak this mystery of Christ. But starting from me, I was disobedient. Because I have this sin of rebellion passed down from my ancestors. What is it that I did towards my parents? Our ancestors, you know what they said? You know the poems that they made? There's a poem that represents Korea. 
you know, to serve your parents as much as you can whilst they're alive. Who doesn't want to serve them? However, our our ancestors, that's all they could end up writing. They say, you know, you serve them as, as much as you can. But it doesn't talk about how you try and it doesn't work. They say, you know, the parents, when they get old and they die, then they say it's sorrowful. So when your parents were living, no matter how much you tried to serve them, it didn't work. And once they pass, you only have this sorrowful heart. And they say, well, what, what can be done? Our ancestors, they wrote these poems. So they say to serve them. Who? Who doesn't want to serve them? How many disobedient children are there, were there, and few dutiful children that the king would give an award? You think he gives an award because they're common? No, it's because they're so rare. But even those who receive this rare award, how? How could they have washed this sin of rebellion to become obedient? No, they were just double-minded. All they did was lie. So because of this sin of betrayal, You know, I've said to you, I've said in front of you with my own mouth, I'm someone who was so disobedient. You think that I've repented or not? It's because I repented that I can say this. So how much were you obedient to your parents? Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, you have to reap what you sow. So how much have you done? Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2, as long as you have this sin remaining, even if you pray, you're not going to be released. So then what should I do? They, they passed away. It says, you know, it's, it's so sorrowful because this is one thing that you can't go back and fix. That's what our ancestors, the, the poems that they wrote. They say at the start, you know, to serve your parents as much as you can because in the end, there's something that you can never fix, which is, you know, once they've passed. So our ancestors, all the Confucianism, Mencius, you know, all their Buddhism and self-mastery, you know, it's there's nothing but this poem, which is to say once, once, once they're dead, it's just sorrowful mem- memories, you know, what can be done now? So, so... Were there any obedient children? No. So it was all rebellion. And that's why as more and more time goes by, there are some very, very disobedient children. So is it just me that's disobedient? Well, you and I were all the same. And that's why. Because everyone's like that, they just try to pass it over as something that's just universal. It's God who gives us a way of solutions. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. Because you have this sin remaining and you pray, that's why you don't get answers. You pray for your children to do well. You pray for yourself, but it doesn't work. Starting from me, if I'm not doing well, then you can't help others. So every time your children come to greet the parents, you know, if they take their utmost care, they brush their hair, they change into nice clothes, or do you do you like that? Or do you like it if they come looking really strange? Inside you'll be thinking, oh gosh, they're useless. You know, they're worthless. But God knows all of our thoughts and our actions. Psalms 139 verse 1. You know what? You know what a beating is? So to go to heaven, to receive blessings, to receive answers, you need wisdom. Well, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. It's when you receive this, this, this rebuke, this beating, that's when you can receive wisdom. But which church beats you? So is your life of faith right? So it's those people with, with doctorates, these idiots, you know, just because they, you know, use a little bit of lies that seem right at that moment. That's how they get their doctorate. But they're, they're the biggest problem. What they've learnt with evil and they try to boast of their name, you think that God's just going to leave them alone? You know, what kind of God is he? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9 to 10. He's a God that has so, he's jealous, so he gets rid of them all. 
So who makes, who makes it like that? They do it. If it's the worst of evil, then they should repent and do what's right. But they try to learn that and use it. So we have to realize properly. God's not, just gonna, God's not gonna leave that alone. So God wants to help. Why can't you receive help? Because of your ancestors' sin of rebellion. How have you lived? How did you treat your parents? You have to repent. Let's read together. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. Amen. So God is saying, it's because of sin I cannot help you. So what sin? It's the sin of rebellion. So our parents passed down this rebellion, but they didn't know. Even though they didn't know, it's still sin. So we had that covering us, and yet no matter how much we tried to be obedient children, it wouldn't work. So in the world, you know, the, the language teachers, this poem about serving your parents, I, can't, I don't know what year we learn this. But other than the poem, this poem, what other poems are there about, about serving your parents? You know, out of, you know, this is a very accurate one. You know, when you're, once your parents die, you can't serve them. That's all they say. But they don't say how you should serve your parents. You know, Confucius, Mencius. Which religion tells you about serving your parents? Well, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, here it comes out the way for you to serve your parents. So your parents committed the sin of rebellion so that you cannot become obedient. They've just passed down this sin of rebellion, of betrayal. So those people who do forced their repentance and they betray, you look at their household, you look at their children, you see what relationship the children and parents have. They're a complete mess. According to the word, it's all the sin of rebellion. So to the point where they should be stoned to death. So they're so afraid that people will find out those demons who can't even say amen, they and their children are like that. So they can't say amen. And they're like, oh, he's talking about my family. Let's fix it. In the world, there is no way. You know, they say the whole your whole life you can't fix this, but the law will fix it. That's why we're here. So we have to receive this blessing for me and my children to live, for Korea to live. In the world, there is no way. But... He's made it so that there is a way. So I, even though I didn't honor my parents and I wasn't obedient, that's that's past now. But that sin remains. That sin goes down three and four generations. Because of this sin, God can't help us. So we've come to receive the help that God says He'll give us at this time. So let's read Ephesians chapter six, verse one. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Amen. So which religion, you know, they don't have Lord, they don't have Christ. Which religion has Christ? It says to obey in the Lord, to honor in the Lord, in the Lord. So the Lord is Christ, Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Christ is the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is forced at repentance. So if you do forced at repentance, then you go inside of Christ. If you go inside of Christ, then Christ changes to the Lord who helps you. So if you're in the Lord and when you've become a new person, that's when you should honor your parents so that you don't have the sin of rebellion. So then all the sins you've committed so far, you'll be forgiven and your children will become obedient. Which religion in the world? These fake churches that talk about God, you know, even Buddhism talks about God. Confucianism talks about God. The shamans talk about God. Just because you say God, that's not how it works. God is in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. So by the mystery of Christ, if you do four-step repentance, you become someone who is inside of the Lord. And if you repent of your sins and your ancestors' sins, Psalms chapter 32, verse 5 and 6, then you will meet the Lord. So in the Lord, it's when it's when you honor your parents in the Lord. That's being obedient, an obedient child. Otherwise, it's sin. So this is what we have to repent of. 
So the reason why I wasn't obedient to my parents is because I wasn't in the Lord. And even if your parents commit the sin of rebellion, if I'm inside of the Lord, no matter what dirty things your parents have done, I can still become an obedient child. So you shouldn't grumble against your parents or anyone. Now, if we do the mystery of God and, and receive the Lord's help, then we will become obedient. We can become obedient now. And my children will become obedient. Is this amen? So he's taught us this way. And then verse 2 and 3, and then it talks about how you receive bless, blessings. I'll read verse 2 and 3. Honor your father and mother, which is, which is the first commandment with a promise. Where? Inside of the Lord. So then, verse 3, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Healthily, happily, you'll do more well. So then a thousand generations will receive blessings. Your children will become obedient. So if your children are giving you heartache, it's because of this sin of rebellion where you should be stoned to death. But to, you know, to have that sin remaining and say, Lord, can my child do well in the exams and have a good job and marry well and do more well and to go to heaven, that's dog talk. Because of this sin of rebellion, it doesn't work. Because I've committed the sin of rebellion. I was disobedient to my parents. You know, whether your parents knew or not, it's come down to you. And I too, I didn't know how to go inside of the Lord. I didn't know how to go inside of Christ, four-step repentance. So I sinned myself. And so your children don't listen. And you have your ancestors' diseases. Why do you do four-step repentance? To have your sins forgiven. If your sins are forgiven, then your ancestors' demons can't stick. So those diseases that they bring, they can't come to me. We and our children have to receive this blessing. We have to do more and more well. Is this our men? Let's call upon the Lord three times. Anyone, anyone will have this sin of rebellion. So let's confess and go inside of the Lord. If I go inside of the Lord, then all my children become obedient. Not just obedient, but their diseases will, will depart. So that grandmother's demon, instead of bringing good things, she brought the thyroid disease, headaches, and, you know, the legs hurting. That's what she brought. So these ancestors' demons, why, how is it they stick? It's because there's sin, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. But if you do force that repentance with the blood of Christ, your sins are forgiven. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, God only forgives inside of Christ. So any who forgives those who are in the Lord. That's why you have to do four-step repentance. You have to do the mystery of Christ. So if you're forgiven of your sins, then the demons don't stick and the diseases disappear. So how good is this promise? So even these, the doctors in hospitals, you should at least be able to cast out demons in order to become a doctor. You know, if you say, if you're not forgiven of your sins, even though we do surgery, it's going to come back. You know, that's what you should say. But it's so sad. And then, we, and then you talk about the 21st century. You know, what's the point of the 21st century if you're filled with demons, with the evil that you learn with your head? Let's live rightly. So in the past, how we weren't obedient to our parents, now let's confess this to go inside of the Lord. Then I'll fix my destiny and my children will completely change to become obedient. We'll do more well. A country will live. A country now people will live. So by health, you know, you'll only so you'll only receive health. So to become a blessed man, it's only the Lord who helps. So to go inside of the Lord, let's call upon the Lord three times. Lord, 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 Father God. All this time, because of the sin of rebellion, me and my children were all ruined. Today, may we end this. May we receive forgiveness. May I do well and my children to become obedient. And may we live as patriots, patriots for our country and our people, as a blessed family.